Dragon 101 with Danielle's Demons, formerly known as Reptile Mama. Um, what I've done is actually, it's just a stupid story. I'd actually changed the name to Bearded Dragons 101 with Danielle Stevens. Um, I thought about changing it to Reptile Mama, but I changed everything as that. And at this point, I'm just not ready to go back. So once I've acquired more reptiles, we'll go back to Reptile Mama. But we're going to stay with Bearded Dragons 101 because that is what we do. Informational videos on Bearded Dragons. So today, um, and what got me to this topic is, um, as you know, Thor had been staying at my aunt's house. And um, he was fed a lot of the same diet, which normally we always have fed him kale and or um, squash. Most of the time it's butternut squash because that's his favorite. Um, as you know, squash is um, really good to make him go to the bathroom. So he used the bathroom regularly. And then I'm not sure if it was stress or what it was being in a new place, but when he got back home, he used the bathroom once and then hadn't used it for three days. So, um, I mean, some, some reptiles only use the bathroom once a week, but that's just not normal for Thor. So, um, or some bearded dragons, rather. So, I started panicking, like, you know, a normal mama does. And, um, immediately started looking up things to help him use the bathroom. And I wanted to give you guys some information on that because I know how worried and panicked I was. Um, so we are going to go over a few ways to help your reptile use the bathroom and the video is on poop. <laughs> so, um, let's get Thor out. So this is Thor's hide. This is what he came with when we rescued him and we just never took it away because it was something familiar to him and he absolutely loves it. I think it's actually for hamsters. I'm really not sure, but. It's one of those. It's not for bearded dragons, I can tell you that. But it's nothing that would hurt him. And it suffices, and he's comfortable with it. So we kept it. Um, but he has just been laying around all morning being lazy as usual. His normal lazy self. Um, he knows that mama and daddy get him out every morning. He goes for his morning stroll. He gets fed. And he plays with Bubba for a while, and he goes back in. So, um, while I'm getting things ready, I am going to entertain you guys with this cute little video of Kaysen chasing Thor yesterday. So, enjoy. <laughs> what are you going to do? Huh? There he goes. You going to get him? Go get him. He's gonna get your toy, you better go get him. Yeah. Oh, he's coming around on the other side of you. <laughs> Look over there, he's on the other side of you. <laughs> Where'd he go? He disappeared. He come around on the other side. I hope he'd see me. <clears throat> Where'd he go? He oh, ain't up there. There he is. <gasps> you spotted him. There he is. Did you spot him? Oh, there he goes again. You better go. Oh, he's back over here now. <laughs> go get him. You see? Oh, there he is. You ain't interested in him. Alright, welcome back guys. 
guys, I hope you enjoyed that cute little video of Thor and his brother. Um, so one of the far, one of the main ways to get your beardy to go to the bathroom is a bath, first and foremost. Now, like I said, he wasn't using the bathroom, but we usually do a soak every day. Most of the time, it's every other day, but we try to do it every day. Um, but we had been doing extra long soaks because he wasn't going to the bathroom. And we are going to show you what you need to do once you put them in a bath, once you soak them. Um, are you ready, Thor? He does not like baths, so I don't think he's ready. All right, guys. So what we have here is just an aluminum pan full of water. I would say it's around 95, 96. It's okay to even get it up as far as 98. That is body temperature. Um, you don't want to get it too hot. The way I check is, as you all know, I have an infant, and the way you check an infant's bottle to make sure it's not too hot or it's bad is to test that water on your wrist. If it burns your wrist, it's going to burn your animal or your baby. So, obviously, if it burns your wrist, you want to cool it down. That feels amazing. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take Thor. Now, I'll warn you, he'll probably freak out a little bit. But we're going to take him. We're going to stick him in this water. He does not like bass. <laughs> okay, you're all right. You're okay. Now, what you want to do ah! is take him down in their bath. Yeah, he's going to puff up at me and everything. But what you want to do is I would say let them soak for a little while. Um, you want to let them soak for a little while in their bath and just let them, don't bathe them, don't mess with them, you know, comfort them, of course, if they are not liking it, but just let them chill. And then after they've chilled for a little bit, what you're going to do is you're going to go under their bellies, right up above where they're between their legs, I guess you would say, is right right up above the, where their legs meet right here. And you're just going to massage. Just little circles is the way I do, Thor. I, I just kind of rotate and massage just all over down there, everywhere. And you're just going to keep doing that. Um, it should feel good to your dragon. Thor oh, seems yeah. to like it pretty well. Uh, do you like that, Thor? Yeah, he seems to like it pretty well. He did yesterday. And I'm going to tell you, I've done this probably for about three minutes, if even that long yesterday. And I automatically felt Thor start to constrict. Like, I knew he was getting ready to use the bathroom. And he, you're sticking it in his eye. He don't want it. And so after you've massaged, I would, I would um, maximum do it about five, ten minutes. You don't want to stress them out too much. Um, if that doesn't work, you may want to try it again later on in the day. And, you know, I would, I would recommend doing this up until they haven't used the bathroom for a week. After a week, you're going to want to go to the vet. Um, no matter what information I give you, no matter what, um, solutions I provide for you, if your bearded dragon has not used the bathroom, for over a week after now this is after you've started trying after you've started trying everything then you know usually you want to start trying after not seeing them used to bath there for a week that's when you want to start trying so maximum maximum i would go a week and a half two weeks um before i go to the vet um me being as crazy as i am i would probably go after a week myself but you know, they can go up to a week without using the bathroom. So, let's get him out of here. Let's get him dried off. And I will give you a few other ways to make your beardy go potty. End it. Take it off. Okay, so we've got Thor out. I've got him in his little towel getting nice and snuggly and warm and dried off. And while he's drying off, I wanted to give you a few other tips to help your dragon use the bathroom and another one is the food that you give them um i would not recommend any type of worms or anything um that's just going to cause them to get more impacted if they are impacted um uh, i would recommend squash pumpkin which is a squash but you know a lot of people don't know that um 
I would also recommend leeks. Um, now make sure that you pu puree their food because you're not going to want to put all this hard food on top of them if they're already impacted, just causing them to get more impacted. Now, if that hasn't worked and the bathing hasn't worked, you can also try to give them a little bit of, and you might want to look up the amount, you can try to give them a little bit of mineral oil in their food. You can also use a little bit of prune juice mixed with olive oil. Now, like I say, you need to look up the amount of those because I'm not sure. Um, but those would be my last options. Um, now, be careful with the juice because that can hurt your beardy's belly. Um, but that would be giving my beardy something other than their food would be my last option before going to the vet. Now, once you get to the vet, of course, they're going to do um, an x-ray or even an ultrasound to see if they are impacted. If they're impacted, they may do an enema. Um, and for more severe cases, they're going to do surgery to remove the impaction. Impaction can be an awful, painful, just aggressive death. And that's something that you don't want your animal to experience. So, to end today's show, I thought we would feed Thor his breakfast. <laughs> Alright, so what we have here is zucchini squash and butternut squash sprinkled with a little calcium plus D3. Um, I, I have already got that cut up for him. Now, if you've got a baby, of course, you're going to want to cut this up a lot smaller. Um, let's see if he is going to, because he already, he already sees his arms down here, so let's see if he'll eat a little squash for me this morning. Now, your dragon doesn't need worms every day. The only reason I'm giving him worms um, for the first week is because he has slimmed down a little, so I want to get his weight up. Just a little bit before we start going back to our regular routine. Uh, vegetables every day, worms every three. <clears throat> you know, you can have your own routine with your... You can have your own routine with your dragon. Um, but this is just ours. So, it's been morning time. We've got him out. We've gave him his soap. Um, okay, so Thor is sitting here waiting patiently for his super worms. He is staring at... The super worm bow. He knows what this is. He sees it almost every day. So we're going to give him a few super worms. Um, we're not going to give him many because I do want him to eat his veggies today. Because I've been giving him so many the last couple of days, he really hasn't bothered with his veggies because he wants worms. And at this age, you want them to eat 80% veggies and 20% protein. So their veggies are a lot more important than these worms, guys. Ooh, got stuff. Yeah, he is chowing down on these worms. Yum, 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 yum. All right, so I think that's enough worms today. He also had a few off of camera. So I told you guys that we would check out the. Sorry. I told you guys that we would check out the super worms that we have in the box for, that we're breeding. So I'm just going to go grab those and we'll check those out. What I'm actually going to do also while I have you guys on here is I am going to um, replace the veggies that are in here because they're pretty dry with new ones. So, as you see, these are pretty dry and yucky. And let me tell you, the smell in here is raunchy. Like, ugh. It's bad. So, please wash your hands after this. Because <laughs> it's gross. Thor, you are not getting these worms. So, you can quit eyeballing them, dude. So, I'm just taking out all the old veggies. Um, I also have a few scales in here where they have shed. 
which is great if they're growing and that they are going to change. And I'm going to tell you, I don't like these guys, but the one that shed is absolutely a beautiful color. It is a gorgeous color. Okay, so I've got all of the excess um, out. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some fresh. I'm actually not going to use the kale this time. I'm going to use some lettuce. This is green leaf lettuce. I don't keep iceberg lettuce in my house because I'm afraid that somehow Thor will get a hold of it. I know he can't get in the fridge, but it may accidentally get fed to him or something. So, And this also contains a lot of um, water and stuff. Um, that way it keeps them pretty hydrated and growing. So, yeah. so oh, I'm probably putting more than I should in there. You actually only need just a tiny piece. But, you know. At least it's going to last a couple days. <laughs> and also this lettuce is going bad. So we might as well use it for something constructive. Right? So I'm just going to get these in here. And they actually look pretty great. To be honest. I'll show you guys. If you can see them. I should have showed you why I had everything out. But, um, but yeah. So, basically, I don't want to dump all this crap out here. Alright, Thor, you're going to have to move, bud. So, yeah, I dumped it anyway. Um, let me see. You can't really see them. I guess I can raise the phone up here. Alright, so, I don't know if you can see them that good. But, there they are. They're doing pretty great. Now, once they cocoon, I'll put them into one of the storage drawers uh, to turn into a beetle. And that's where they'll stay until they go to back to superworms. So, that's actually what our next video is going to be about, which is breeding superworms. I'm going to give you guys information um, on how to do so and let you know everything you need to do that with is actually pretty cheap and very easy um i didn't think it would be but it is um and that is why i chose super worms to breed also i want to insert here um i have told you guys several times that my husband was in an accident um i hadn't told you how or why or what happened so i wanted to give you guys a little information on that we're not allowed to give out a lot of information because we do have a um court case going on with this but, um, basically, he was on his way to work. Um, the roads, it had been raining that day. So, he slowed down to turn into a friend's driveway to, um, pick up something of the guys. I can't remember really what it was. But, um, it was kind of slick, so he slid a little bit. So, he turned his left signal on to go on up and turn in a, um, turning spot that was probably a couple hundred feet on up the road. And, um, a truck was coming up very fast behind him, couldn't get stopped, and tried to go around him and hit him. I actually tried to go around him the way he was turning, so he just, you know, bam. Yeah, that happened. Um, my husband was cut out of the car by the jaws of life and airlifted to University of Louisville Hospital, where we found out that he had a broken sternum, several broken ribs. Um, he had his back fractured in four places. He had to have his spleen removed because his spleen wouldn't quit bleeding. And um, I'm pretty sure he had a concussion because he's having a lot of memory loss and some memory problems and things like that. So um, we have a long road of healing and in many ways um, he's developed PTSD over the accident. He's very scared in vehicles now. Not really scared but more hesitant I guess you would say. Um, when we're going to turn off in a vehicle. Um, so we lost our vehicle because of the accident. Um, he'd been out of work. I had to be out of work to stay in the hospital with him. It's just, it's been a whole lot. It's been a, a whole lot on us. So, um, if you guys, um, would keep us in mind, that'd be great. Um, you know, um, uh, I'm talking about your prayers. Uh, I don't know what your, um, religion or whatever it is and I respect everybody's religion, you know, to each their own. But for those of you who do pray, if you pray for us, I'd really appreciate that. 
Um, but I want to thank you guys so much for watching today. Make sure you tune in tomorrow for How to Breathe Superworm. I love you guys so much.